The M4 Mac Mini released a little over a year ago now at this point, and in that year, it's completely ruined the way that I look at other desktop class computers. And it's not because it's the most powerful or the more expensive, but it's because of what it can do at that $490 price point that other computers can't do at even double or triple the price. So even at the baseline model, which is the 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage version, it makes me question why anybody else would look at a better value play because there really isn't anything out there when it comes to a desktop computer. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is break down exactly what it's been like using the M4 Mac Mini in my workflow from the specs to design to of course, all the different use cases that I have with it. And then also some of the limitations that do come with it because again, at $499, there is a point of diminishing returns at the end of the day. But without further ado, Let's talk all things M4 Mac Mini and why it's the best value computer of all time. But now, before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we go over all of Apple's products and long-term reviews, definitely consider subscribing. But now, let's get into the specs and the design of this thing and then the use cases. So before we get into those use cases, let's talk a little bit about the design, the form factor, as well as all the different specs that come with the baseline M4 model Mac Mini. So from a design standpoint, this is the first time in a little while that Apple kind of revamped the design a little bit, and it is a 5x5x2 five by five by box or computer that fits everything that you need right inside of it. From the top down, it actually looks the same form factor and same kind of curved edges as an application that you see on your iPhone, so a little Easter egg for you guys that's there. But I did go with the baseline model, like I mentioned, so I have the M4 chip. You can upgrade this up to an M4 Pro, but we'll kind of stick to the baseline model because this is mostly the value play here. I have 16 gigs of unified memory, as well as 256 gigs of storage. There's a built-in fan in here for heat dissipation, but I'll tell you guys right now from the very beginning, there's only been one time that I've heard that fan kick in in the entire year of me using it, and we'll touch on that use case in a second. But for the most part, this thing is whisper quiet and stays super cool to the touch even when I'm kind of pushing it to its limits at the end of the day. So now in terms of IO on my M4 Mac Mini, the baseline model, you have three Thunderbolt ports on the rear which support up to 40 gigs per second transfer speeds. And then you also have an HDMI port in there to support that third external display, which is great to have. You also have the power port, of course. And then on the front of it, you have two additional USB-C ports which support up to 10 gigs of transfer speeds. And they're very convenient to have on the front. And then you also have a headphone jack. I do wish there was an SD card reader on the front of this like they do with the Mac Studio, but again, then you're gonna have to add a little bit more cost, and this is supposed to be, again, a smaller, cheaper version of that Mac Studio, so you are gonna have some sacrifice there. And then like I mentioned, you could get an M4 Pro here if you really wanted to to really soup it up and get up to 64 gigs of unified memory. Then those Thunderbolt 4 ports turn into Thunderbolt 5 ports for faster speed. So you do get a little bit more when you get to the M4 Pro, but then at that point, you're still getting great value overall, but now you're in the thousand to 1500 to $2,000 range when you are talking about a Mac mini. And I wanted to stay at that $500 price point. And then some other little tidbits is that you do get an ethernet port on the rear. And then some, from a connectivity standpoint, you do get Wi-Fi 6E. So it's not Wi-Fi 7 quite yet, but this is a year old device and you do get Bluetooth 5.3. So it'll still future proof you enough if you get it today for the next five to seven years, in my opinion. So now let's get into the use cases because this is where we're gonna learn a little bit of what the capabilities of this M4 Mac Mini are and then also what some of the limitations are because there are some at this price point. This isn't gonna be some magical piece of machinery even though at some points it does kind of feel like magic with what it's doing. There are some limitations on the upper echelon where I would recommend maybe an M4 Pro, maybe getting some sort of MacBook Pro, getting an M5 MacBook Pro, or maybe even like a Mac Studio. But from my use cases, as you may or may not know, I'm an iPad Pro first user. I use my iPad Pro as my kind of actual computer to do all my kind of more intense tasks like the video editing like the thumbnail editing like being able to use it as a viewfinder when I am recording these videos so my M4 Mac mini is kind of like a secondary device that I use it but I still use it on a daily basis and I use it for more minimal tasks overall but still to the point where I'm so impressed with what it can do and how much it can do at that same light so for example I use it for a lot of internet-based research and a lot of communication so I always have slack open I always have my email open I always have some sort of messenger open whether it's whatsapp or discord through my web browser and I've actually been using the Comet web browser as of late. I've been using that for about six months now and it has replaced my Chrome usage overall, but it's good to know that these kind of Chrome based web browsers, you can still have 20 to 30 to 40 tabs open and it's not gonna really stutter the machine whatsoever. I do have clean my Mac X up there. So it does tell me whenever my Ram is starting to fill up a little bit, not sponsored, but it is always good to have that kind of diagnostic tool. And I do tend to get the warning of like, hey, 12 to 14 gigs of your 16 gigs of Ram are being used up, especially when I have those 30 tabs open at the same time, but it doesn't really slow down the machine really. It's kind of just like a warning. And when I do start getting rid of tabs, it'll go back down, but it doesn't speed up or slow down the M4 Mac mini whatsoever, 
the way that I've been using it. But again, I'm using this mostly for Slack, for email, for communication, for the off kind of video edit when I do want to use it to kind of show it off a little bit. So if you are somebody who does plan on using the M4 Mac mini as a kind of content creation tool, then by all means, it will definitely be able to handle it. I'd probably recommend getting some extra storage or I'll recommend some other accessories at the end of the video to give you some better storage options. But overall, if you're worried about the Mac mini not being able to handle content creation type of tasks, put that worry out of your mind because it can definitely handle it. And I know that I'm gonna have some coders down in the comments below that are maybe are curious about how it works in that element. I'm not somebody who really does that on a day-to-day -day or at all, so that's something to take into consideration. But from my understanding, it can handle pretty much everything that you throw at it from Xcode to being able to think, do things in the terminal to being able to then have Docker and dev containers. It's all very feasible in there because you're not really pushing it too much when you are coding and rendering things in real time. I also tend to use my Mac mini as kind of like my central Apple ecosystem hub, right? Everything that works like magic still works like magic with the M4 Mac mini. So I do a lot of copy and paste from my Mac mini over to my iPad and vice versa. I use my iPad sometimes in sidecar as well to be able to drag and drop some files from between them. I also use iCloud as a file system. So whenever I do save something from my iPad, maybe a thumbnail onto my iCloud desktop, it immediately shows up into my Mac desktop and then I can upload all the different files that I want to to a YouTube video for thumbnail creation and things of that nature. So I use both of them in conjunction a lot. I can definitely do everything on my iPad Pro or do everything on my Mac mini, but I like the current flow that I'm in where I'm very kind of mobile and versatile with my iPad Pro, save things whenever I need to in the iCloud to then access them on Mac mini and vice versa. And the way that I do my workflow that way has worked for me tremendously. And over the last few months, I've gotten much faster with the way that I do both my personal and professional workflows. And that's another segue in the fact that I use my Mac mini a lot for personal use for a lot of kind of the personal finances around the house, scheduling, whatever I need to do. And then also keeping in communication with my wife, whether it is via iMessage or with our shared calendar and things of that nature. So being able to have that has been great. And now I know people are also going to be curious about gaming on the M4 Mac mini because this thing is tiny, so it is relatively portable, and there are companies even out there like Waterfield that make bags that are specifically made to bring your Mac Mini on the go, especially with some external monitors from like Satsu and things like that. You can bring this thing on the go as long as you have a decent power supply and you are willing to kind of carry that with you. And from a gaming standpoint, it can game decently, right? I'm not gonna sit here and say it's gonna replace your gaming computer or your gaming laptop because that's not what this computer was meant to do. But there are some good AAA games in Apple Arcade like NBA 2K that work completely fine. There's some other AAA games in there like Assassin's Creed that'll work with some frame drops and things like that. But overall, if you're a light gamer, you just like to kind of pass the time with some iOS kind of type applications that you can play on your Mac Mini, then yeah, the Mac Mini will be able to handle that. If you want a true AAA gaming device, this is not gonna be for you. So that's something to take into consideration. And then some of the limitations, again, to consider when it comes to the M4 Mac Mini is that you are dealing with a baseline model Mac Mini, 256 gigs of storage, depending on what you use it for, does fill up very fast. So I tend to use external SSDs from Lexar and from Samsung to really kind of offload a lot of the stuff that's happening on my Mac Mini, just to make sure that it's running as smoothly as possible. And even though technically it's not user upgradable internally, our very own Jeff did make a video on how you can actually upgrade the internal storage. I'll leave that video linked down below for you guys to check out because it does work if you do it correctly, but it is something to kind of take into consideration in terms of it's not really supposed to be user upgradable versus a lot of these other machines on the Windows side really are. And another limitation I personally found was a little bit on the IO side. I do wish it maybe had at least one USB-A port for some of those off things that I do have that require USB-A, as well as like I mentioned, the very beginning, an SD card or micro SD card slot built into them. So I would recommend getting some sort of maybe Thunderbolt hub or maybe some sort of USB-C dongle, which I do have. I've been using the one by Ivanki, the Max Fusion 2, I believe it's called. I absolutely love that thing. And it works perfectly well with my Mac mini. And I have my current Mac mini in a double monitor setup at my BenQ monitor and then a vertical Satsu monitor that I like to have. And I can even support a third monitor if I really want to. It's just something that I don't really have the need for right now. And then of course, the major thing to consider here when you do purchase the Mac mini is that you're only getting the Mac mini and the power key. There's no other peripherals that it comes with. So you need to make sure that you have your own keyboard, your own mouse or your own trackpad, and of course, some sort of monitor. But the good news is that you don't need to go out and buy Apple stuff. Like you don't have to spend $150 on a Magic Keyboard or $120 on a Magic Trackpad or a Magic Mouse. You can go off and get a Logitech mouse, which is what I use. I have the MX Master 4, but for a very long time, I used the Anywhere S2, which is I believe only $50. I also have a Magic Keyboard, but then I was using Satechi's version for a long time, which is only $50 or $60. And then of course you need a monitor, but the monitors, you know, they're a dime a dozen. You can get a portable one for like 70 bucks if you really want to. Probably wouldn't recommend going that low, but you can get a decent monitor for $150 to $200. So all in, if you don't have anything laying around, which most people do, you're still spending less than, let's say $800 for a beautiful desktop kind of experience that is gonna last you for years to come. 
And like I said, most people already have a keyboard laying around and a mouse laying around, and they work with pretty much anything that you can connect via Bluetooth or anything that you could wire in via USB-C. So now who should get this M4 Mac mini if you haven't gotten it yet, right? Because there's a big spectrum of what this can do. Of course, if maybe you're a student that doesn't need the versatility or the mobility of a laptop, this is gonna work fine for you if you're kind of a at desk kind of person or at home student, this Mac mini is gonna work wonders for you. But then also for those kind of creators that are up to the mid tier kind of level, where you are working with 4K footage, you are working with some a couple of levels or different kind of timelines at the same time. But if you start to work with 8K or ProRes or raw footage or your red camera footage, then maybe you might need a little bit more power. Not to say that the Mac mini can't do it, maybe you can do it with an M4 Pro Mac mini or maybe get a little bit more RAM. But I'm specifically talking about the baseline model here because that's where the value play is at. This is also great for work from home pros, for families, maybe if you want to have a home server, maybe you have a Plex server because you're so tired of all these streaming services costing you hundreds of dollars now at the end of the month. So being able to use it in that way is great. Now who this is not for is maybe for those people that need some heavy 3D rendering or visual effects, you know, so you need cinema scale projects like I mentioned, being able to play AAA native games, or anybody that needs 64 to 128 to 256 gigs of RAM, of course, go and get yourself a Mac Studio or a 16 inch MacBook Pro, and you know who you are if you are somebody in that kind of ballpark. But the M4 Mac Mini, it is the most value play that you can get when it comes to a computer. For $499, you get the latest and greatest from Apple. It works inside of the ecosystem. The M4 Mac Mini is super efficient. All the apps open the way that they're supposed to and instantly they open. I've just been, I've been so impressed with what you can get for $499. I remember back in 2019, I bought myself a brand new, I think it was like a 16 or $1,700 MacBook Air. It was an Intel based one. And that thing was supposed to be almost top of line, especially for a MacBook Air prior to the M series MacBook Air coming out. And that the fact that I spent $1,700 on a computer that was obsolete in less than six months was insane to me. It was, I remember it had like an Intel i7, it had I think 512 gigs of storage. I believe it also had 16 gigs or maybe 24 gigs of RAM. And in the moment it was kind of, it was quick enough, but I remember the moment the M series MacBook Air came out, that baseline M series MacBook Air was running circles around that Intel based MacBook Air. And now we're five generations into the M series and it's just gotten better and better and better over time. One last limitation that I will bring up about the M4 Mac mini that happened to me recently was that I downloaded Atlas, which is ChatGPT's kind of a web browser. And that is when I heard the fans really start to spin up. I only used it for a little bit because I was a little bit worried at what was going on with the M4 Mac mini in terms of being able to kind of spin that up. So if you are somebody that really loves Atlas and maybe get a little bit more RAM or maybe get the M5 version when it comes out because that gives you a little bit more from an AI perspective workload that they were talking about with the M5 MacBook Pro. But that is something to consider and something that I noticed very recently and really the only time that I heard that fan spin up. But That'll do it for this video, everybody. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna leave it linked down below as well as some other kind of products that I use alongside my Mac Mini. The M4 Mac Mini is on sale on Amazon at $4.99 right now, which is absolutely insane. I always recommend looking on Amazon first because they're always cheaper on Amazon. It's a no brainer. You get the same exact computer. It's still packaged by Apple, shipped by Apple, just via Amazon, but that'll do it everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin, leave a comment down below what you think of the M4 Mac mini. Do you have one? Have you picked one up? Are you still rocking an older Mac mini? Do you have an M4 iMac, which is kind of the same exact story, just all built in one. Always curious to know what you guys think, but that'll do it. If you want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace everyone.